want to address a few questions today about um, our transmission conversion we did in the 59 where we replaced the Hydromatic with the uh, Turbo 400. And there's some re reoccurring questions that keep coming up. So I thought I'd make a little short video here just explain some of the things that we did or are planning to do. We get asked about the vacuum modulator. It's not hooked up yet. It's there. We just haven't run any of the, of the steel tubing to it. So that's, we get that question quite a bit. Uh, the other has to do with the uh, dash indicator because of the different shift patterns. Um, that's going to be one, if you guys do, do a swap, that's going to be up to you to figure out how to relabel that. Um, I'm doing kind of a special solution. I'm using a, um, a module that will also provide the neutral safety switch and the backup lights. Uh, it's a little switch box. I'm going to have a digital readout in place in the dash that uh, I custom make with a little uh, LCD panel. I'm going to have an animated graphic as you put the car in gear. The first letter will show. The, the D for drive will come up, then the R, I, V, E will slide in. Um, but that one, that's, that's going to be a special one-off that I do for John's car. I don't really have a good solution for that. I'm trying to figure out something from my friend uh, Chevrolet. Yeah, the Power Glide was the original transmission, now it has a Turbo 350. And the indicator not only is incorrect, it uh, doesn't line up properly. So that's probably the toughest one to solve, is your, your indicator on the dash. And along with that, like I say, I'm using a, a module that will be mounted to the transmission that will um, give electrical signals for the neutral safety switch. Because of course, your stock neutral safety switch and backup light switch won't work because of the different uh, pattern of shifting between the hydromatic and the, and the turbo hydromatic. One last thing is um, when you're mounting everything up and you've got the transmission mounted to the engine block and you haven't bolted the torque converter to the flex plate yet, um, push the, uh, the torque converter all the way into the transmission where it's fully engaged in the pump gear and see what the spacing is between the back of the torque converter and the flex plate. That should be only about an eighth of an inch to a three sixteenths of an inch gap. If it's more than that, you're going to want to put some shim washers between the torque converter and the flex plate. You want maximum pump engagement up to, the, up to um, as much as possible with about an eighth of an inch of free play. So the torque converter should be able to slide back and forth against all the way into the transmission and then back out towards the flex plate. If when they're slid all the way in, if that gap's more than about 3 16 then you need to look at shimming it to about an eighth. Uh, that'll increase longevity of your pump by quite a bit. So there are a few things that have been asked repeatedly that come up, but it's mostly a GM issue with the shift patterns that were used with the, um, the hydromatic and the power glide, things like that. So just a few things to keep in mind and hopefully clarify a few questions. So thanks for watching.